Years ago, we didn't know for sure that there is a black hole at the center of our galaxy, but by measuring bursts of radiation and observing in detail the orbits of stars close to the galactic center, we now know. Black holes have intrigued many people due to their puzzling nature, but this is an exciting era because scientists have recently identified the nearest black hole to Earth, but they collapsed at such an extent that there's a region around it where from which light can't escape, and that's a so nothing can escape, and that that's a black hole. Music. Even without specialized equipment, join us as we explore the closest black hole to our planet that can be observed even with the naked eye. Don't let the name deceive you. Black holes. A black hole is far from being an empty void. Rather, it's an immense amount of matter squeezed into a tiny space. Picture a star 10 times heavier than the sun compressed into a sphere as small as New York City. Consequently, nothing, not even light, can escape the gravitational pull. For centuries, the idea of a massive, dense entity in space that swallows light has captured human imagination. The concept of black holes was famously anticipated by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Anything, if you compress it enough, becomes a black hole. If you take an orange and you squash an orange down sufficiently small, according to Einstein, it becomes a black hole. This theory demonstrates that when a massive star reaches the end of its life, it leaves behind a compact, dense core. The force of gravity overpowers all other forces and leads to a black hole forming if the core's mass surpasses about three times that of the sun, according to the equations. Most black holes emerge from the remnants of a massive star that explodes in a supernova burst. Smaller stars collapse into dense neutron stars, which lack the mass to trap light. However, if the star's overall mass is significant enough, around three times that of the sun, no force can prevent the star from collapsing due to gravity's pull. During the star's collapse, a unique phenomenon occurs as the star's surface approaches an imaginary boundary known as the event horizon. Time on the star decelerates in comparison to time tracked by distant observers. When the star's surface reaches the event horizon, time freezes and the star can no longer collapse. It becomes a halted contracting object. Larger black holes can even originate from collisions between stars. The Swift NASA Space Telescope, launched in December 2004, detected brief intense bursts of light called gamma ray bursts. After analyzing data from the aftermath of these events, both the Chandra X-ray Observatory and NASA's Hubble Space Telescope concluded that powerful explosions can transpire when a black hole collides with a neutron star, leading to the creation of another black hole. Although the fundamental process of black hole formation is understood, a persistent mystery in black hole research is that they appear in two vastly different size categories. On one side, there are numerous black holes, remnants of massive stars. These black holes, referred to as stellar mass black holes, are scattered throughout the universe and generally weigh 10 to 24 times more than the sun. When matter is pulled towards a black hole, it can rebound off the event horizon and be pushed out instead of being drawn further in. This results in the creation of bright streams of material moving at nearly relativistic speeds. Even though the black hole itself remains invisible, these intense jets can be observed from a considerable distance. Capturing an image of a black hole, such as the one in M87 captured by the Event Horizon Telescope, required two years of careful and detailed research before the actual image was obtained. The collaboration among telescopes spread across multiple observatories. Worldwide, produces an immense amount of data that is too large to be transmitted over the internet easily. Researchers are optimistic about capturing images of other black holes in the future and assembling a database of their appearances. The upcoming target for the study is likely to be Sagittarius A star, the black hole located at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Sagittarius A star is particularly interesting due to its unexpectedly calm and dormant behavior, possibly because of the influence of magnetic fields suppressing its activity. Another research effort revealed the presence of a cooled gas halo enveloping Sagittarius A star, providing groundbreaking insights into the environment surrounding a black hole. 
But how numerous are black holes really? A recent study proposes that there could be millions of small black holes in our cosmic surroundings that remain undiscovered. This implies that black holes might account for about 1% of all matter in the universe. To comprehend the count of black holes, it's essential to trace back to the formation of stars as black holes emerge from the death of stars. Thus, the researchers behind this study took several steps back to estimate the population of black holes across the universe. The initial step involves simulating the evolution of galaxies over billions of cosmic years. Galaxies serve as the origin of stars, and their developmental history plays a role in shaping the composition of stars within them. Some galaxies consistently generate new stars, while others undergo mergers, resulting in intense star formation followed by dormancy. The astronomers examined previously recorded observations of galaxy statistics over cosmic history, noting patterns in galactic merger rates and demographics. Another critical factor is a galaxy's metal content, indicating the presence of elements beyond hydrogen and helium. Larger galaxies possess more gas, allowing them to produce a greater number of stars. Simulations show that higher metallicity promotes more effective cooling of gas, hence aiding the efficient formation of stars within galaxies. Using these foundational pieces of information, astronomers constructed a model of the stellar population within galaxies, revealing the distribution of small, medium, and large stars across the universe. The next challenge was to trace the evolution, and importantly, the life cycles of these stars. By using simulations, they establish connections between specific star properties, such as mass and metallicity, and the star's lifespan and eventual fate. Only a small fraction of the largest stars produce black holes, and simulations provide insight into the percentage of stars in a galaxy that transform into these mysterious entities each year. The astronomers also observe the development of binary systems. As black holes can draw nourishment from companion stars, growing in size as they consume gas. As a result, a black hole originating in a binary system tends to be more massive than one formed independently. As black holes age, they continue to consume surrounding gas, a process that astronomers estimated. Black holes also occasionally collide in the vast emptiness of interstellar space, fusing into larger entities. To conduct an accurate survey, astronomers needed to calculate the rate at which black hole mergers occur within each galaxy. This meticulous tracking allowed them to follow the evolution of the black hole population across billions of years. By piecing together this puzzle, they constructed a mass function, a type of astronomical census that provides information about the number of black holes of various sizes existing at any given time. As expected, the most substantial black holes, also known as supermassive black holes, are notably less common than their smaller counterparts. The researchers determined that our universe contains approximately 50 million solar masses worth of black holes in every cubic megaparsec of space. A megaparsec equals 1 million parsecs, or 3.26 million light years. If each black hole weighs a few times the mass of the sun, there could be over 10 million individual black holes in that same volume. For context, the total mass of black holes takes up about 10% of the mass contributed by stars. Hence, in between the stars visible in the night sky, numerous black holes remain hidden. In contrast, supermassive black holes are exceedingly rare, with each galaxy typically hosting just one of these colossal entities. In total, black holes constitute around 1% of all baryonic matter in the universe, forming a separate category entirely distinct from dark matter. Currently, the bulk of baryonic matter remains within dispersed nebulae. The inherent nature of black holes as light-absorbing entities renders them invisible. So how do scientists go about studying them? For a considerable time, black holes were solely theoretical, or at the very least, associated with collapsed stars. Before receiving their more captivating name, the label black hole is often attributed to American physicist John Wheeler though its exact origins are somewhat mysterious. The term made its debut at a meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science in January 1964. The true originator of the phrase remains uncertain, 
but Wheeler quickly adopted and spread it. Now, at first glance, the pursuit of black holes might seem futile. After all, how do you observe something that emits no light? As our understanding of the physics of black holes progressed, scientists uncovered alternative approaches for their study. Since the actual hole remains invisible, researchers must rely on observing its effects. When matter is drawn into a rotating black hole, a fate that befalls almost everything in the universe, it is expected to create an accretion disk. This disk emits a strong glow due to friction, along with visible jets generated by the pulse. Moreover, the gravitational influence of the black hole can extend to nearby celestial bodies. This methodology traces back to an ancient technique that was used to determine the existence of Neptune. Astronomers analyzed how Neptune's gravitational pull affected the orbits of other planets. Another significant factor is Hawking radiation, a concept introduced by Stephen Hawking in 1974. This revelation astonished both Hawking and the scientific community, revealing that black holes couldn't entirely lack radiation. Hawking's understanding of quantum physics, which explains the behavior of tiny particles, particularly the uncertainty principle, forms the basis of this concept. The uncertainty principle dictates that localized energy can fluctuate considerably over brief intervals, allowing pairs of quantum particles to briefly materialize and then vanish before being observed. If this occurs near a black hole's event horizon, one of these virtual particles might fall in while the other escapes. The stray particles form what is commonly known as Hawking radiation. However, detecting this phenomenon from a significant distance is unlikely. Although black holes seem to be the natural endpoint for stars with masses equal to or exceeding three times that of the sun, this mass range isn't an intrinsic limitation of black holes, but rather a result of their formation process. In theory, black holes could exist across various scales, ranging from incredibly small to millions of times the mass of the sun. A supermassive black hole with a billion times the mass of the sun is at one end of the spectrum, with micro black holes and quantum black holes positioned at the speculative very small end. For instance, if Earth collapsed to form an event horizon just 9 millimeters in diameter, it could result in a micro black hole. While the mechanism for such an occurrence remains unknown, quantum black holes are even smaller, ranging from the size of 5,000 protons and upwards. In theory, they might be generated within a particle accelerator, but would rapidly decay. Present accelerators lack the energy to generate one independently. However, if the universe possesses extra dimensions, this could lower the energy threshold to an attainable level. Currently, X-ray binaries provide the most compelling evidence for conventional black holes created through the death of a collapsing star. These objects demonstrate the acceleration of matter from a regular star to an unseen counterpart emitting X-rays in the process. While this phenomenon can occur with a neutron star, if the mass of the consuming star exceeds three solar masses, it should result in a black hole. The first X-ray binary containing a detectable black hole was Cygnus X1 in 1964. A potent X-ray source was identified, later recognized as a potential black hole candidate by 1971. This X-ray source, apparently weighing between 9 to 15 solar masses, was extracting material from a blue supergiant star within the binary system. In 1975, Kip Thorne and Stephen Hawking made a wager over whether this was indeed a black hole. By 1990, Hawking conceded as more comprehensive observational data emerged. At the same time, a recently uncovered black hole could potentially be the nearest to Earth, and remarkably, it's visible in the night sky even without a telescope. This particular black hole, positioned 1,000 light years away in the southern constellation named Telescopium, is part of a system that includes two companion stars visible to the naked eye. During a survey focused on double star systems, astronomers unexpectedly discovered this black hole while investigating what they initially believed to be a binary star system, where two stars revolve around a shared center of mass. Their observations were centered on the binary system known as HR 6819, and they employed the MPG ESO 2.2 meter telescope located at the La Silla Observatory in Chile for their study. Through meticulous analysis, 
they unveiled a hidden object within the system, a black hole. The scientists deduced its presence by observing its gravitational interactions with the other two objects within the system. By tracing the orbits of the stars and assessing their movements over several months, they determined the influence of another massive yet unseen entity within the system. These observations revealed that one of the stars completes an orbit around the invisible object every 40 days, while the other star maintains a substantially greater distance from the black hole. This revealed object is categorized as a stellar mass black hole, a result of a dying star's collapse, boasting a mass four times that of the sun. The team validated that this system harbors the closest recognized black hole to Earth. Remarkably, the black hole within HR 6819 stands as one of the earliest stellar mass black holes uncovered within our galaxy that doesn't emit intense X-rays during its interaction with companion stars. This revelation holds the potential for identifying other dormant black holes within the Milky Way. Although countless black holes likely exist in the cosmos, our current knowledge remains limited to only a few of them. Now that scientists have a better understanding of what to search for, locating these objects should become more straightforward. Observers in the Southern Hemisphere can easily identify the stars within the HR 6819 system in the night sky even without binoculars or a telescope. This duo appears as a single star with a fifth magnitude brightness within the modern Telescopium constellation, adjacent to the Pavo constellation. On the magnitude scale, where lower numbers indicate brighter objects, the faintest objects visible to the human eye are at a magnitude of 6.5. Naturally, there are other black holes even closer to us, but yet to be discovered. It's estimated that our galaxy alone holds millions of black holes. The next nearest known black hole after HR 6819 is in the Monoceros constellation. This black hole, disguising itself as an unusually small object nicknamed the Unicorn, lies at a distance of only 1,500 light years. This nickname has a twofold meaning. The black hole candidate not only resides in the Monoceros constellation, represented by the unicorn, but also its remarkably low mass, about three times that of the sun, makes it almost unique. The unicorn nickname certainly fits the system's distinct and unique nature. Therendu Jayasinga, leader of the Discovery Team and an astronomy PhD student at Ohio State University, elaborated on the discovery in a recent video. The unicorn's companion is a bloated red giant star nearing the end of its lifespan. In roughly 5 billion years, our sun will similarly expand into a red giant. Various instruments, such as the All-Sky Automated Survey and NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, have focused on this companion star over time. Upon analyzing the extensive dataset, researchers stumbled upon something intriguing. The intensity of the red giant's light varies rhythmically, suggesting that external factors are at play causing changes in the star's shape. Calculating the star's velocity and light distortion, the team concluded that the object behind this influence is likely a black hole, specifically one with a mass of only three solar masses. To provide context, the supermassive black hole at the core of our galaxy boasts mass around 4.3 million times that of the sun. Similar to how the moon's gravity creates tides by distorting the Earth's oceans, this black hole distorts the star into an elongated shape, almost like that of a football. Hence, the simplest and most plausible explanation indicates that it is indeed a black hole. Such a straightforward explanation is often the most likely one given the challenging nature of black hole discovery. Exceptionally lightweight black holes like this are very uncommon. When accompanied by a partner star such as Gaia BH1, Identifying these black holes becomes more feasible due to their dynamic interactions with the star. During these interactions, the star's matter is observed to spiral towards the black hole. As the black hole consumes this material, it generates X-rays accompanied by the ejection of material jets from its vicinity. Over the past four years, astronomers have been actively searching for dormant black holes utilizing diverse data sets and methodologies. Previous efforts led to the identification of multiple binary systems that were mistakenly assumed to be black holes. However, this pursuit has now yielded fruitful results. 
for the first time, Gemini's subsequent observations confirmed the presence of at least one dormant black hole within the binary system, leaving no room for doubt. The observed orbital characteristics of the system presented no astrophysical scenario other than the presence of at least one black hole. But while the discovery sparked excitement, numerous unanswered questions remained. According to scientists, the original star that evolved into the black hole likely boasted a mass 20 times greater than that of our sun. If this hypothesis holds, its lifespan would have been merely a few million years, given a star's fleeting existence. However, if this original star and its companion formed at the same time, the former should have developed into a supergiant star, consequently devouring the companion. But the companion's continued presence contradicts this scenario. Could the companion star have managed to survive such a fate? It's intriguing that conventional models of binary evolution struggle to account for this specific system. This situation begs questions about the origin of this binary system and the potential abundance of dormant black holes. While this discovery may unveil potential insights into the expected population of dormant black holes in our galaxy, it also presents an unresolved mystery that awaits further investigation within its extraordinary context. One question remains unanswered. Why does the companion star within this binary system appear so ordinary? The quest to unravel this query awaits. Feel free to share your thoughts on what fascinates you the most about black holes in the comments section below.